Boom. Hey, guess what, guys? Today I'm talking to you about cock rings. Yeah, I bet you weren't expecting that. Well, the reason why I'm talking about this today is this is the Firm Tech Tech Ring invented by Dr. Elliot Justin. And this device hopes to help with the erectile dysfunction issues that are rampant in the veteran health space. So if you want to learn more about why this device is important, how this is related to your cardiovascular health, and how you can get involved in a study to help millions of veterans get harder to kill, then stay tuned. All right, so I'm going to give you guys just a prompt right now. If you are listening sound on in public, now's the time to put the headphones on because we're going to be talking about erectile dysfunction. (gasps) I know. So here's the deal. Veterans have a much higher rate of erectile dysfunction than the gen pop. Generally speaking, if you're in your 40s, 40% of us, because I'm in my 40s, have erectile dysfunction. In your 50s, 50%. In your 60s, 60%. That, are, that is staggering in terms of numbers. The downstream effects of that for your ego, for your love life are pretty bad. The VA hands out blue pills like you wouldn't believe. And they also hand out cock rings. I didn't know that. But apparently, they do. Now, Dr. Elliot Justin, I've had on the podcast. And you're going to hear... Uh, follow-on interview with him, so stay tuned to the to the rest of this episode to talk about his device. So this is the Firm Tech Tech Ring. You see it right here, okay? This Tech Ring is the first of its kind to actually monitor your nighttime erections. Why is that important? You'd say. Well, there's a direct correlation between cardiovascular health and your erectile health. So in order to prevent issues with your heart. The first, the first thing you need to be monitoring is your erectile health. This device does that. So it sends data to my phone. And so I'm going to strap this bad boy on. I know, I know. Not to, I'm like, hey, 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 this isn't day. Don't get, get, get your mind out of the gutter. I'm just going to be wearing it all night. I'm going to get the data on your phone. You're not going to get any videos or pics of that pervert. But I'll be going over the data um, and then uh, explaining kind of how this device can uh, further the amount of data that you have that you can bring to your doctor to say, hey, you know what? My erectile health isn't very good. Doesn't this mean that I may have a coronary event in the future? And what strategies I should take in the future in order to prevent that? So that's what this episode is all about. So stay tuned. We're going to get into the conversation with Dr. Elliot Justin, and you're going to find out the data that I'm going to be pulling off my phone after wearing this for one night. Not only that, you're going to be able to volunteer for Dr. Elliot's study where he's looking for veterans to participate with wearing one of these rings so that he can get some more refined data on how it performs and what type of mitigation strategies can be applied for later. So if you want the details for that, you're going to be able to find them all in the show notes here. So stay tuned, enjoy the episode and share with somebody in your network that could definitely benefit from having better erectile health. Just be discreet about it. All right, stay tuned. Folks, I'm sitting down with Dr. Elliot Justin yet again, because we're going to be talking about his new device uh, called the Firm Tech Ring. Um, so there's a bunch of different uh, devices that actually uh, Dr. Justin is going to talk about. So Elliot has on the show uh, a few months ago talking about erectile dysfunction, but more importantly, how many fellas this, this actually affects and what he's doing about it, which is the cool thing. He's doing something about it. He's doing the American thing. He recognized the problem. He's, he said, I'm going to create a company. I'm going to create this new device, which nobody else is doing. So I've got one in my hands right now. We're going to explain it a little bit more in detail. And um, Elliot, let's start with your backstory and what brought you to creating this interesting device and let's let's call it spade a spade it's a cock ring yeah. but it's a high-tech cock ring the first the first of its kind uh let's chat a little well bit. It's, it's the first of a kind i can say they're specifically designed to heighten orgasms not just keep your dick hard so i had my backstory is i'm an emergency medicine physician uh and i can tell you that short of a heart attack or a stroke there's no emergency that concerns a man as much as as his dick going limp so <laughs> yeah, it's alarming. So uh, this came to me because I was, cha- I, I, 
I went to medical, medical technology in 2015, and I was challenged by a urologist at the University of Utah coming up with a way of counting the number of nocturnal erections. And I'm a doctor. I, I, I would guess that 99.5% of doctors don't even know about the significance of them because I was unaware, and I think people in general are, are unaware. So what, what does it mean? What nocturnal erections signify? Well, a healthy man should have three to five per night. Everyone knows about morning wood, and they might poke their partner, and the partner knows about them in the morning as well too. But what... They don't know. We don't know about the ones we're having during our sleep. So, by leading indicator, I mean that before a man has a heart attack or a stroke or develops significant uh, clinical diabetes or atherosclerosis, the number of nocturnal erections will go down. Well, this uh, neurologist professor who challenged me with this, like frankly, like most urologists, uh, straight urologists, I'll say, didn't really know about cock rings. But uh, I was kind of the right man at the right place at the right time because I've always been into, interested in sex. And I'm a doctor. Uh, and I, my thought was, well, we could do better than just count nocturnal erections with a device that's one overnight. Let's just come up with something that's, that will measure the duration of firmness of erections while a man is having sex. Because after all, what does, what does a man care, care most about his penis? What, you know, whether it's going to work while he's fucking. So that, was, that became my goal. So my thought was to embed sensors and, to, and make a smart cock ring. So... I mean, there's a big gap in the healthcare wearable world. We have apps for almost everything from, you know, weight, calories, yeah. how many steps yeah. you took, you, 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 they're, they're ketones, apps, ketones. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. you're checking out your retina. But there's this huge gap about sex. Now, what do men care more about the steps they took yesterday or the calories or where their piece is working well? And how's that, how's that compared to other men of their age with, with you know, similar problems? So. That that meant I had to change the cock ring because cock rings are stupidly made out of hard silicone. Dave, I lost you. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Like yeah cock rings are made out of the, uh, the same way for the last 150 years. They're made out of hard silicone. And you can't wear hard silicone overnight. It hurts. And you, frankly, and during sex, you can't wear hard silicone for more than 15 or 20 minutes because it's, it's painful. It's, constri it's, constri it's too constricting. It pinches. So I decided that I'd make a cock ring more out of, out of material, more like a soft elastomer, like a stress ball, a little bit tighter than that, but we put a stress ball because that could be worn overnight. Mm -hmm. And the other advantage of that material is that it doesn't produce a chokehold in your penis. It doesn't block the arterial flow into the penis. It just constrains the venous return, which means you can wear this ring for hours. Uh, you don't have to have, a, have an erection to put it on. You don't have to interrupt your sexual activity and say, hey, where's my ring? And now I, now I have a heart on and I'm, I'm ready. Uh, and <clears throat> it'll comfortably keep you hard after you've had a climax. You don't want this thing, that thing off right away, which is nice in case your partner needs a little more time or just nice, frankly, romantically, if, if, if you're still hard afterwards. So we, we reinvented the cock ring. We also designed it to increase the ejaculatory phase. I, I don't think any other cock ring manufacturers ever, ever really thought about that. To them, it was just about putting a chokehold in your dick, hold, hold, hold the blood in, which is important. <laughs> because... Um, uh, you, you know, it, it puts more blood in it, but it doesn't, it's uncomfortable. So ours not, does, doesn't put, doesn't put this, you know, uncomfortable, you know, you know choke, choke hold on it. I wanted to double the ejaculatory time. That was my goal. So women have vibrators, which are great for them, but men don't have many products, probably, probably any products that really enhance their pleasure. But if you can draw out the ejaculation right. without cutting it off, then you can increase your, the amount of time you're orgasming, you're climaxing. So with this ring, um, my ejaculatory phase goes from four seconds to seven seconds on average. Uh, whoa, we've whoa, had people almost, almost, doubles? almost doubling. Most, in, in a tested group of, of uh, 12 men, almost everyone hit 50, at least 50%. Well, that's, that's the big difference. And it really, it, it's just, you know, uh, one of the things that I really would like to see is cock rings be mainstreamed for men. The way vibrators have been mainstream mm. for women. And women today, very, it's uncommon today to find a woman who's embarrassed by having a vibrator. I mean, 90 million women in the United States own vibrators. It's got to be a similar percentage in, in Canada. Uh, and 90 million? 90 million. Okay. Have like at least one, one. Like one third of the population. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> one, at least one. Oh, that means grandma has one. That's gross. <laughs> uh. Well, uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it's good for grandma, and, and you know, and uh, you know, people, you know, lots of people have written up kind of fun stuff about amount of sex people having in retirement communities. 
Something to look forward to, Dave. We'll get old eventually. 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 In 30 years' time. Yeah. I, funny story. My, I can't remember which grandma it was because it's like a mythical story, but one of them worked in an old folks' home when she was like in her 20s, and the stories were insane. A lot of broken hips from banging, <laughs> and they'd find them kind of like incapacitated. It's like, it's funny, but it's kind of sad at the same time. It's like, oh, I like broke his hip, and then like a few months later, they died, but at least they went out doing what they love, you know? It's like, wow. It's like, yeah, because they're hu it's, humans are humans. All of a sudden, you have like one guy per like five women. Yeah, the sex ratio is very, very, very male happen? positive. What, what's going to happen? My mindset's not going to change in 35 years. Pretty confident about that. So I'll be like, all right, all of these old <laughs> ladies, here we go. Yeah, I'm like, assu uh, assuming I'm still not, I'm not, I'm not married, right? <laughs> That's the biggest option, big caveat there. Um, so, okay, so straight so, guys just often go, don't get this though. I, you know, I, you know uh, 90% of the gay men who are sexually active use cock rings all the time. And only 10% of straight men do. Uh, because, you know, if, I think, I, I guess for two reasons. One, they're just, they're just less inhibited in general. Two, they, mm -hmm. they're, they're focused on their, on their pleasure without, you know, without, you know, without inhibition. And also, uh, I think anal, anal penetration requires a harder dick, a uh, sustained harder dick, because, because of the, the rectal sphincter can't, that's tied up. Just you're putting that out there in case you're, you, you, you're, you're wondering. That, 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 anatomy is important on this podcast. <laughs> anatomy is important. So, um, okay. So ahead. that just, to, just to interject there, um, on the side of like just this, the, the sexual health thing for a lot, a lot of us do, dudes, and I, I was pointing this out, especially a lot of us guys that were army or infantry, we, we're kind of like barbarians and gorillas, right? Like we, we, we're crass. We talk about having sex with our girlfriends and there's like our last like bang and stuff like that. And like, it's pretty open, but then it seems like as soon as we're out and as soon as we get quote unquote civilized again, we don't want to chat about this. We don't want to talk about our issues in, they will we'll have chats about like our mental health we'll have chats about our physical health this is like the last it seems like the last frontier of this is a chat taboo for sure because i'm pretty i'm well clearly i'm open about it because i have you on the podcast i want to chat about it. i want to kind of break that taboo a little bit but things that you're talking about just you know increasing the length of your orgasm that's a that's a topic I've never even heard of until talking to you because I never thought that that would have been a thing, but yeah, it makes sense. I mean, if women can increase the length of their orgasms, why can't guys do it too? I mean, we're talking about equality all the time here. So therefore a little bit of equality for dudes can go a long way and you're pushing the boundaries on that and, and creating something, which I thought was really interesting because again, most of us just suck it up. I don't need pleasure. I don't, you know, you know right. what I mean? Typical guy, like stoic thing to do. No, no, no. I'm good. It's fine. Don't worry about it. But in reality, man, if you can't be comfortable with your own sexuality and like feel like you're a man, it's, it's probably a big deal if you're experiencing some issues. So um, that's really cool about, um, you know, this project and, and, and this company it created. So um, yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, another point I, you know, a typical ahead. reaction from straight men is I don't need that because I think they're embarrassed. Uh, whereas, you know, my point to men is, it's yeah. not about needs, but want. Do, do you want to have better orgasm? Do you want to satisfy your partner by, ha by having a longer or, you know, erection? You know, I really think men need to put a ring on it, the way women co commonly, commonly use vibrators today. Uh, the <laughs> we can get Beyonce to do the remix. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what, what? Um, actually I wanted to, I wanted to point something I wanted to point something out there. I, just, I was just listening to somebody uh, a, a therapist. I can't remember their name, but they're talking about just the, the intimacy between like a man and woman in a married relationship. And you know, for us guys, we want to get closer with sex. And the better the sex is, the more we want to have it and then the more we give to our partner, our, our, our lady, right? And it seems like that's almost lost in the conversation where it's like, oh, he always wants to have sex. It's like, yeah, like that's how, that's how I make the connection. But then that's how you'll get the connection because I'll be more available to you because I feel closer physically. And I just, I, I find that weird that that's kind of lost in the sauce, maybe in a generation or two. I don't know. I don't know what grandma and grandpa were doing. Nobody ever talked about it, but I'd be curious to know, like from your perspective, like, is that, is that kind of the thing that we're missing? Just that intimacy and that that's what something like this can do, which is increase your willingness. Cause you get more dopamine, you feel better. Yeah. And well, it, to your partner. Is that kind of like the big picture? It certainly benefits. Every, there isn't a, a health system that doesn't benefit from your brain, even to your skin. And people have sex regularly. Actually, live the one the British studies. People have sex regularly, meaning twice a week. Live on average eighteen months longer. All things being equal, in terms of the cardiovascular disease. 
So you're not going to live forever, forever, but we'll take that. Uh, it, it could give you some extra time, and that, extra time in that nursing home, extra time in that <laughs> retirement community, do some more banging. <laughs> Paul, you know, also, one of the things that women object to about men is is the come and done mindset. Men will, will uh, come too quickly, and a ring will keep them harder longer. And also, a ring will keep them harder after they've come, which if you know if, and that produces more intimacy. For me personally, you know, my, my wife always comes before I do. So the issue really is if I'm harder afterwards, the issue is more one for us of intimacy to your point earlier, which is that if I'm still hard, I'm still in bed. You know, the, the male mentality is, come, you know, come and done. It was what's next. Who's texting me while I'm, while I'm screwing? Uh, who uh, I want. Is it time for a drink? Uh, what are we what are we doing next? You know, so. But if you have to, if a man, a man with an erection thinks differently, uh, even even Canadians, I think, too. So the. I think Canadians are the same. Yeah, yeah I think I think I think, so. I think it's quite, kind of universal. So you know, a man with a heart is still he's still, you know, contemporary terms, but in the game, people more my age, he's mm-hmm. still it's still it's still a, a romantic, intimate experience that the guy is still erect, you know, and, and you know, and, and engaged. That's interesting. Um, so let's get into. Uh, I'm going to unbox this sure. thing, and. Uh, and show people what, uh, what we're you know every, about, about every thousand box comes with a million dollar check in it, so maybe you'll get maybe you get lucky. <laughs> it's like Willy Wonka. Oh, wow! All right, oh, oh crap, I'm dropping all over my keyboard here. So, uh, we got the uh, QR code here. Can I have a QR code today? Okay, so what were those used for recently? Yeah, before COVID, nothing, nothing. Right. Look at the way they trained us to QR. Q- <laughs> <laughs> I was using the, I was, I, you know, I'm gonna be that guy. I was using them before they were cool. I put them on my uh, posters t- so you could buy my book. So you go to Amazon. So you wouldn't have to type in Amazon.com or CA. I was like, this is really cool. Why aren't more people using it? Damn it. I shouldn't have said that out loud, man. <laughs> it turned into a dystopian nightmare. Besides that. Uh, okay. So I got it right here. So this is uh, just to clarify the uh, firm tech. Okay. Performance ring. So this is the one, if I'm looking at it correctly, like we've got the little uh, red area here, which is a little bit harder. That's where the tech is, right? Correct. That's the Bluetooth device. That's the tech. Device. With, with, yeah. is with the te- that's with the tech ring. We, do, we make a version without the tech called the performance ring. So the, the tech is something we haven't discussed, and I could get into that if you want. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. Yeah, let, yeah. Let's do it. Because for me, like I, I'm also um, very curious. My initial curiosity for me, because I'm in my 40s. I am now concerned about my heart health uh, a lot more than I was even like five years ago. I want to know objectively without having to go through a battery of, you know, calcium, um, uh, coronary artery, calcium screens and doing stress tests at a fundamental level. Do I have any anything to be concerned about? Because I'm asleep. You know, I wake up. I'm usually at full mass. But then again, maybe throughout the night, I'm not getting any. So this device is based on, and the, like the, the, the monitoring is based on some really good research, right? That uh, if you could expand on, uh, could go a long way for, sure. for people curious about the device. So uh, the, 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 the tech ring is like an electrocardiogram stress test for your penis. Uh, and also is a, is a profound reflector of, of cardiac health. So as I said earlier, the number of nocturnal erections is, is a leading indicator of vascular health. If you're having a normal number, if you wear this device overnight and you get four or five readings so you can get an average because you, you, you don't it takes one or two readings for the senses to calibrate to your body <clears throat> it takes four or five readings to get an average because you can really it turns out um and we didn't this was unknown until people started utilizing our, our, our device there's so many things that impact the number of nocturnal erections you have alcohol mm. quality of sleep the amount the, the, the duration of your sleep medications like antihypertensive medications um, SSRI antidepressants that people take so commonly today have an impact on you know, nocturnal erections. And, and, and if you have sex before you go to bed or jerk off before you go to bed, it, that number goes down as well too. So we're actually, we, we sold a small thousand, pro, thousand products and we have data that no one else has about what, you know, what's, what's normal. And as that database grows, we'll be able to better inform our users about you know, you know, where they stand. One, during sex, you measure the duration of firmness of erections. So the device is, is not just a great cock ring, uh, and I will say that um, we've had quite a few women say that they like a cock ring because it's covered with a soft elastomer. So 
it, if for, especially if a woman is on top, it's a lot easier to rub to rub a clit against soft elastomer than it is to rub against against pubic bone, especially for for for, for women as they get older. You know, out of the thirties and the things that certainly turned on. Uh, you've experienced as well too. Certain women, the things that turn on women in twenties are different than the things that turn on women in the forties. You know, from your forties and fifties. So it was, and it was designed doing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like getting a reach around while you're doing dishes, too. <laughs> ah, man. That, that Why did bliss? That, that needs to be normalized. <laughs> you hear that, Annie? I've been waiting for like 35 years for that. I, 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 uh, anyway, it's a whole other subject. The, uh, maybe it's not a different subject. We can have another podcast. We can talk about that on another podcast. But the. <laughs> uh, yes. So, yeah, so, it, so it doesn't. So it, 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 it was actually designed to enhance, to enhance female pleasure. Because actually, the, the clitoris is is, um, is 1.5 centimeters away from the base of the dorsum of the penis. So most cock rings that are, are, are really not going to help one at all. Whereas this is a little bit elevated; it gives us some, something you know to rub against. But that said, getting back to the, the technology, one during sex and measure the duration of your erection and the frequency of your erection. So now you can now measure the impact, positive or negative, of diseases, diabetes, hypertension, atherosclerosis, or medications like a big cock killers being antidepressants antihypertensives, recreational drugs, alcohol, all these supplements that make claims that they're good for your dick, uh, diet, exercise. So all these, th you know, with 50% of men having ED by age 50, there are a lot of desperate guys out there. And where there are hopes, there are dopes. Yeah. And where there are dopes, there are they're people marketing stuff to them. Uh, you know, I just, you know, I have right. guys telling me that they're taking beet juice or that they're taking... Tonkat Ali, this Malaysian herb. I, you know, we've been testing some of these things with our with our test group here in Bozeman, like goat weed, the DHEA, or um, allogeny pills, nitrous oxide pills. We, we haven't found anything that works that that will mm -hmm. help a man, you know, get harder. Uh, yeah, it's our hope too that with men, that men men have the data. They'll change. They'll, they'll comply. If they're, if they're diabetic, they'll take they'll take insulin. If they're hypertensive, they'll take they'll, they'll take their pills. Um, if they're drinking too much. They'll drink less, you know, they, um, and so it, with the, with the, with the hope that th this is like your, this is like your prime motivator. It's like, Hey, you can actually have more sex and who doesn't want to have more yeah. sex. And right? also, yeah. And if you do, if you do the lifestyle changes that you know, you're supposed to, like we went over it in the last, uh, you know, episode that we, we did, you know, eat properly, lose weight, be physically active, get outside, get somebody, do like the human things that you're supposed to things will get better. And then this is your objective data that you can get to show that you're actually getting healthier. Right. Cause that's at the end of the day, what you're trying to drive. If I'm, if I, that's, that's right. You know, it's, okay. it's my hope. That, okay. So it's my hope that men will develop a positive relationship with this device. We know that with smart watches, smart rings, digital scales, my zone, heart band monitor people, people are in the gym that people, mm -hmm. many people will develop a positive relationship. Not when they have data, they'll start paying attention to it. So it's our hope that with this data, men pay, they pay more attention to their sexual health, but also the healthcare providers will start thinking about, you know, doctors, we're, we're assholes in so many ways. We don't ask people about their sexual health. I mean, I, I, you and I think I've discussed this offline. I'm, I'm seven years old. I've never had a doctor tell me, warn me about the sexual side effects of a medication or, or, or ask me about how my, how, how's your marriage? And what's really important to people who, who are in, whether they're married or, or whether they got, they're gay and they got partners, what's the most important thing in their life probably? The quality of that, of that relationship and, and particularly their guy, the quality of that, of that sexual relationship. And, and to your point about mm -hmm. shame, it's, it's one thing for, for ordinary people to have shame, but doctors seem to have shame and inhibition about this as well. They don't, they don't ask. No one's ever asked my wife about her, her sexual health. Um, you know, my, my, my tech guy is here right now. He's, he's in his late twenties. He has some medical issues. No one ever asks him, Hey, is that pill? How's that affecting your, 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 your sex life? So we need, yeah. so it's not just that these technology will, will improve, will allow people to have personalized information about themselves, but it will start to sensitize physicians, healthcare providers that, Hey, there's data out there now that I can actually track the impact of, of an intervention on, on someone's health. And I'm confident Dave, and it might, might not be us that makes the big money, so to speak, that what we're doing right now with our erectile fitness score that we're coming out with this week, 
will, that will become the standard of care in urology and sexology for men's, men's sexual health in three to five years. I mean, it, in the, in the, inevitably, this will fall into the hands of Boston Scientific or Medtronic or some, you know, some, some other company with, you know, with more resources. But you know, what, was, what was blood pressure before it was a blood pressure cup? It was a doctor putting his hand in your pulse saying, oh, it's strong, it's weak. What, you know, what was cardiology right. before an electrocardiogram? It was someone listening with a stethoscope and saying, hey, Dave, uh, ticker sounds good. Uh, go out, you're fine. Sounds right. Right. So yeah. any problems you have in your head. I, you know, so it's this. That's really fascinating. We're, making, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to make not just male sexuality objective, but we're also going to, but that male sexuality is a reflection of a cardiovascular and cardiometabolic health. Mm, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, now that you have that, like, it's, it's at the right moment, right? Because you actually have the tech now that you can do it because, you know, Bluetooth tech, right? Like, like, let's be honest, like this didn't exist 20 years ago, really, to be convenient so that you could put it in something this small, right? You wouldn't want to wear like this on your dick. <laughs> like, all right, honey, I'm Bluetoothed up. Let's, let's go. Let's ride. Um, so I guess the, uh, the last thing we need to do is just do a live demo, right? I'll just throw this back. No. <laughs> oh my God, man. Awesome. So, <laughs> okay. But I am going to do a demo. So folks, if you're, if you're curious, I'm not going to whip out my cock. Don't worry. Uh, but I am going to wear this for uh, a few nights and i'm going to put all the results on youtube now uh, just a, as a kind of user-based thing um the qr code does that, that bring me to the app that i put on my phone how, how does that all work well yeah the, the qr code brings bring, bring the app to put on your phone so you can find us in the I, I you know most people don't do that though david they just go they go right to the google or apple stores and they look for firm tech and yeah. they up upload it there okay and then and then uh, they pair uh then they they, they, they they sync it with you know with their phone Okay. Uh, on the, on the topic of having sex with this thing, do I have to like, if it's, it's like Strava, do I have to hit like start workout <laughs> or is it something that'll pa it'll passively start, uh, for it me? Doesn't pass this you have to, you have to press, you have to hit start have workout. To press record. <laughs> and this actually still okay, my five right. inches. When you press record, the device will then say, excuse me, that it's unpaired and it's not connected to your phone. It's recorded. Mm -hmm. There's a green light that will flash and then the green light goes off. So you're not going to go green in the dark. You can if you want, by the way. You can keep on pressing the button and go green in the dark if you want. But uh, I'm so much like Iron green, Man. I got an Iron Man dead. That'd be sick. <laughs> the green light flashes 10 so times. Good, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. Yeah. And then when, you, when you're done recording, you have to turn it off and then turn it on again. The reason being that we, there are people concerned about Bluetooth radiation, especially on their dick, overnight. Uh, so there's yeah. no Bluetooth. Yeah, the Bluetooth isn't working while you're, while, you're aware, while you're having sex or while you're... Um, while you're sleeping so yeah, that's why you have to turn it on again in order for bluetooth to go on and then the, your, your data is on the cloud and, and and then it takes a blue bar appears at the bottom and as the bar goes goes across when it's done submit so if you have really powerful connectivity it can take 90 seconds if you have slow connectivity and it's overnight and especially if you've had a lot of sex overnight like a young guy like you i don't know five six times looking at you the, um, oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's about right <laughs> yeah uh thanks Doc. and then there's a questionnaire there's um, a questionnaire on it that, that you can skip but it you know so that if you want to say gee i had i took hey i smoked marijuana it's all private by the way we, I, we have no access there's no one in the company has access to your data unless you get permission but if you have if you or i took mm -hmm. or i had two drinks or i took blood pressure medicine or you, so all that medical data is for you for your personal record is there Mm, okay, that's great. And you know, thinking about that is just a way to diagnose things. That would be something if you bring to your doctor. Yes. You're like, hey, look, I've been noticing over the last few weeks. Is this normal? And you just go, hey, doc, here you go. The and then he could take a look, or she could take a look, and and just be able to have more data to make a, a final decision, which is which is great. Um, I I did have a, a question. Is there an accelerometer in this thing? No, but we have plans to add one. <laughs> okay. uh, you know why I'm asking. Well, I, you know I can actually tell you what's, what positions you're having sex in, how many calories you're burning. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like, man, can, I, can we use this as a means to like determine, yeah, calories burn, and then like you throw it into your list of workouts? Oh, my God. This is like next level, man. I love it. Well, you could put up, a, I, I assume probably someone like you is going to want to put up a leaderboard at your gym, right? If I could be the first to start the first banging leaderboard, you could be number one in Canada, North America. I this this will start like this is going to start something. I think we're on to something here. 
We're, this is trademarked right now. I'm saying it out loud. This is trademarked. This idea is trademarked. Better not have anybody else come in and, and try and take this idea from me. This is this is the one that's going to go to the bank. Yeah, you could have like the Bang Olympics. Yeah, <laughs> just like have pages of data, man. And then we then we bring all kinds of charities involved for like prostate cancer and like you know you name it, man. Mental health. Oh my it god, could be, we, it we could be like the- NHL teams c- competing in Canada. Who's the firmest? <laughs> or uh, it could be. Um, <laughs> Could be you could go provincial. Hey, is Alberta firmer than uh, the Quebecois? I don't know. Oh made. man, oh man, I like where this is going. All right, well, th- another pro- Biden another versus project Trudeau to the list. Oh my God, yeah, get some public data on there. Oh man, wow, we we just tapped into something here, Elliot. I think I think we just uh, we hit the jackpot. So uh, I'm a big fan of the uh, big fan of the ring. Um, and folks, so we didn't touch on one of the main things we want to get uh, across to you is that um, Elliot, you're conducting a study. And you need some eligible veterans. Let's let's get into that and and, and let's share the details. About sure, that. Uh, you know there's a significant problem with veterans having PTSD and ED. Many 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 veterans are taking uh, either either Viagra or Cialis, Tadalafil or Uh What we want to do a study to help us determine what really is the best therapy for veterans and what dosage so and we also want to see whether combination therapy is more effective than we suspect it will what i mean by combination therapy is an effective cock ring plus the dalafil so obviously men with ed they want it they get an erect it, this isn't going to help people who can't get erections at all but if a man gets erections and loses them or gets partial erections we want men to do we want what we're look, looking for from your from your view is is we want four orgasms, and that will benefit not just veterans, but men all around the world. So are you willing to have sex to improve the quality of, health, of sexual health for men? So we want one orgasm while masturbating, and, how much, and then measure how much time it takes for your erection to go down. Another orgasm wearing a ring, and how long it takes for erection to go down. A third taking either to Dalafil, so you have to be on the medication, or Sildanafil, how long it takes your erection to go down. And a fourth, with, with uh, using the ring plus uh, either Sedanafil, uh or uh, or Tadalafil. Uh The thesis is that the combination therapy is going to be the best. And, and a private study of six men he, uh, here and here and here in Montana, uh, it almost doubled. Using a ring plus plus a medication was far more effective than either a ring alone or Tadalafil alone. So we're looking to do uh, an independent study of of us that we have lined up a leading American neurologist, sexologist, Amy Perlman. You can find her online. She's actually quite hot. You should have her on, on, on your show, Dave. Uh, she's, she's a lot better looking than me uh, and more knowledgeable in certain ways. So she's our primary investigator. Uh, the study will be, be conducted by what we call the United States or Canada too. It's called Independent Review Board, meaning that uh, we're at arm's length from it. And there'll be an independent statistician, independent mm-hmm. review, review of the data. And that study will, 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 will be publicized. And that study, if it's positive, as we, as we expect it to be, will change the way in which urologists and sexologists and doctors treat ED. Because the recommendation, you know, right now if a guy goes to, to a doctor and says, gee, I've got uh, ED, uh, they, they'll, they, they'll probably screen you for blood pressure and, and diabetes and they'll put you on a medication. What dose is the right medication? They don't know. Uh, and they will not recommend a cock ring because most all doctors are ignorant about cock rings. Uh, so we, 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 what we're trying to do is improve the first-line therapy for men before they have to resort to either a vacuum device or an implant or something, something traumatic and invasive. So that, that's the study, Dave. Right. Yeah, and they that, get to keep that, the ring. Right. I'll, I'll add that, that, you, you, that the ring, the tech ring retails for $275. It's yours. To participate in the study awesome. and anyone who participates in the study gets a free consultation medical consultation about their sexual health with either me or with one of our urologists that's amazing uh so that's really simple to get involved in uh, if you're listening fellas there's going to be a link right here in the description what you need to do is just click the link and you're just going to submit uh nothing to me it's going to go to um to dr justin here to make sure that you're suitable and he's going to 
do the intake. I'm just a conduit because like I said, from, you know, the start of doing this podcast, I want to ensure that, you know, the health of the military community is taken uh, into account. And this is a great way to not only get your health dialed in, but to help others long-term uh, with their sexual health, which is an important aspect of your health. <laughs> Don't neglect it. And there's a study here that like, like how, how better, like what better way to, take about a week of your time at most <laughs> so that a you can get like you can a jerk off a few times you can have sex and you can get a uh, free ring and a consultation with a doctor all for uh volunteering some of your time not only that it's altruistic you're going to be helping out uh buddies that you would never meet d uh, down the road and um that's that's a huge part of uh, getting the veteran community uh, nice and healthy so um any last uh, any last uh, thoughts, uh, Elliot, on um, um, where to go next with uh, with the study and, and and just the uh, the company in general? Well, when you think when you think about um, what you guys are asked to do in the military, uh, no sergeant ever said to you, "Hey, Dave, we're looking for for our guests this week. You're off duty. This is what we want from you." So we're looking or or did they? <laughs> It's Canada, well, you, it's Canada. Yeah, yeah, you know, Canada. Right and you were you were in some sort of elite unit too, weren't you? There's some sort of... <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking we're looking for twenty five yeah. <laughs> for twenty five men who who are taking to Dallasville to Danaville to to enhance their firmness. That's what we need. Twenty five men. Look looking ahead for the company, we we have tested some class for women and we uh which no one else has done. We we have the some that women can use at home in privacy to measure their clitoral health. We tend to come out with that next year. Uh, and we just today launched what we call the maximum performance ring, which is a tighter version of this of, of the ring without the technology. Uh, it is a some somewhat better ring for sex because it because it, it, it's tighter. And I just I didn't mention it to you, David, but it occurred to me right now that anyone who participates in the study not only get the tech ring, but we'll give you a maximum performance ring as well, free. So that's sixty dollars. So oh, wow. uh, that's yours for participating in the study and complete and, and completing the study. Awesome. So that's, you, that's amazing. You can reach me at Elliot, E-L-L-I-O-T -L -L at myfirmtech.com. Uh, you can reach me through Dave. Thanks so much, Dave, for, for having this opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, folks, uh, don't, don't let this uh, opportunity just slip you by. Uh, fellas, you know what you got to do. Um, submit your application and uh, yeah, be on your way to a happier dick and sex life. <laughs> No brainer. All right, Elliot. Uh, thanks again. Uh, it's always awesome to have you on the show and uh, hear about your awesome project. And folks, don't forget, train hard, fight easy. See you on the next one. Peace.